Smart listeners, do you want to advertise your business to young go-getters like yourself? Would you like to create business leads over and over without the stress of manual advertising? It's easy. Call 858-848-6186. Advertise your business on the airways with the LUTG radio show. 858-848-6186. There's brand new listeners daily, and this ad is sponsored by LUTGradio.com. That number again is 858-848-6186. And by the way, you're listening, aren't you? Amen. I'm listening. Oh, my Lord. Amen. You're listening to LUTG Radio's WKKP Digital Broadcasting. My name is Kathy Brox, and this is the LUT Radio Show. That stands for Let Us Thank God Radio. And let us thank God right now. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for you alone are worthy of all the glory, the honor, the power, praise. We're talking to you, Joe God, the Father of Jesus, the one that paid the price for all our sins thank you lord thank you jesus the face of the father thank you lord hallelujah amen 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 thank you lord for our salvation thank you lord for waking us this day thank you lord god for defeating death hell and the grave every disease and every virus thank you lord every sickness has already been healed the price for it has been paid already you need extra parts they're in heaven claim yours now in the name of jesus i thank you lord god that our bodies do not grow feeble lord god i thank you father because they are restored hallelujah the word of god is on the inside of us and before we can even feel a tingling or a twing of malfunction boom we are restored and restoration will come when god will just give you a new thing while you sleeping glory to god hallelujah thank you lord for the new things for you got plenty father thank you lord for we are asking our words you complain and said ain't nobody asking for nothing you're not asking enough i got spare parts i got stuff i want to give you i got blessings to ask and i'm asking on behalf of myself and our radio listeners that are here and yet to come I'm asking that you will bless them abundantly. You know what they need. You know what they want, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for giving them utterance to ask you, Father God, the boldness and the courage to say, Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, I won't. And whatever it is, I will agree with them right now that they have it in the name of Jesus, that they'll ask for the things that you have written in their books. Amen. One of the things you wrote is, hallelujah thank you jesus lord god for you are worthy of all the glory let everything that has breath praise ye the lord hallelujah thank you jesus amen glory to god hallelujah that is in the bible you can read it for yourself amen thank you lord speak through me today oh father god speak through me give me words of utterance lord in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, that somebody will get saved today. Amen. Somebody is saved today. Have y'all ever noticed that whenever God asks you a question, not only does he know the answer to it, but he's about to set you up on a journey. <laughs> he set you up on a journey. <laughs> and he trying to he trying to he trying to bless somebody and he reminds you of what he's done for you. Anytime he asks you to do something. He'll always remind you of what he's done for you. And so if he's reminding you of what he's done for you, that means that he also wants you to remind him what you have done for him. When you go ask him for something like, I'll say something like this, something real simple. I'll be like, uh, hey, Lord, I got a problem with jealousy, see. Let me tell you. I'm not really envious of the, you know, cars and shoes and whatnot, but sometimes I get a little jealous. I see something. I see something I don't even like. And I be having to focus and, and harness myself because, you know, everything ain't the way it look. But you know how you see somebody, you just see lips moving and talking, and you're like, er, what's going on? And then you notice, you know, they kind of too close, and you're like, uh yeah that's too much 
And then in your mind, your mind is, you going like, man, that's stupid, stupid, that's stupid. Because you trust the person. But in your mind, you see this plan in your head over and over again. <laughs> or, or here's a good one. You hear half of a conversation, and all you heard was so-and-so touch what belonged to you. And you go from zero to 60 in two seconds. You like hot. You red hot. Just red hot. And all you heard was, I got to go to the defense. I got to go on the front lines because, uh -uh." (laughs) uh-uh. Don't even do it. Here's a prime example. When we were little, kids used to say, yo mama. And it don't even matter what the next word was. The next thing you saw coming was a fist to the face. Somebody's eye got black. It don't even matter what they said. They could have said, your mama looked pretty. But they came out with an attitude. Your mama, because you the next word is your mama stank. Your mama so fat. <laughs> she could swing. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> We were terrible as kids, right? We would come up with our mama jokes, daddy jokes. Your daddy so old when he walk, he <laughs> when he walk his back claps. How to just <laughs> just silly, stupid stuff. <laughs> One of my friends told a joke. <laughs> she goes. Your mama's so short, she can swing her legs off an hour later. <laughs> and that was the first time we had heard that joke, right? We, we fell on the floor laughing. And my mom, she was so cool about it, she started laughing too. She's like, shut up, that was funny. <laughs> oh, man, we were just silly. Oh, my goodness. Just silly. But... <laughs> Anytime God got a, got got something for you, He gonna start reminding you of all the things that He's done for you. And uh, I found some of that in Second Samuel chapter seven, right? <laughs> oh man! And so you should, you know, I would ask God for uh, control over jealousies and whatnot, because uh, I always like to be slow to anger and quick to listen, because I always want to hear what they have to say. But I explained that. So anyway. I wanted to show you in Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 7, what God was up to, right? And so he's asking for something. But first he's reminding him of what he's done. He says, and it came and it came to pass when the king sat in his house and the Lord had given him rest round about him from all his enemies that the king said unto Nathan, the prophet. See now, I dwell in an house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, go, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. Now, in my mind, (laughs) in my mind, I mean, usually when you come from battle, you ain't been around your woman in a while. I'm thinking, you know, (laughs) that's what I was thinking. I was thinking the king was like, "Uh, is he going to hear what I'm about to do? Because, man, I ain't seen my wife in a minute. (laughs) That's just that's just my opinion, right? (laughs) Okay, and then it says, and Nathan said to the king, go do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. And it came to pass, meaning God is like, you good, go ahead, get your honey. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, go and tell my servant David, thus saith the Lord. Shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Now, this is a question. He's asking a question. Dun, 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 dun. Whereas I have not dwelt 
in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. And so the tabernacle is a is like a church. So it's like a movable church. Like those domes you see like in those vacant lots, they'll put up a tent or they'll put up a, a dome type thing that you can easily take down. Okay, um, okay, and it says in all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people Israel saying why build ye not me a house of cedar now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant David thus saith the Lord of hosts I took thee from the I should I took thee from the sheep coat from following the sheep to be ruler over my people over Israel and I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight and have made thee a great name like the name of the great men that are in the earth moreover i will appoint a place for my people israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time and so god is god is asking for a dwelling place right he's asking for a church home a stable place because he wants to he'll ask for something that he's trying to provide and so he's asking them have you considered me not have you considered the promises that i gave remember i put you over a kingdom but if you are constantly moving where is thy kingdom and now, true enough, that back then, you know, the kingdom was in the heart. It was in the heart of man. Yeah, you forgot. Yeah. Go over here and do this and go there and go here. And they were moving back and forth. And one city would, or one nation or one tribe would conquer another tribe. And they were just everywhere. And God was like, don't you think you want to, I don't know, maybe take over some land and give me a place to occupy permanently god always wants to occupy permanently in our hearts and he, so he's asking him he said i covered all of israel all your people now i'm not some scholar on this stuff i'm only telling you what i read and i'm giving you understanding that i have and that what i see when i read this stuff and when i read it i can see tents in my mind that that were put up and you know i've probably seen them you know on some bible study or some screen one of my pastors used to put up pictures but i don't remember that him putting up pictures this i see like the tents like i'm actually there i see the tents like i'm actually there and so it it's a little weird but i figure to god be the glory so anyway <laughs> almost sound mind and body I don't think I'm there or nothing. I'm just seeing stuff. Um, it's so funny. So God, I ask you for stuff when he's trying to provide a thing for you. So if you think back in your mind, has God ever asked you to do something? Has he ever asked you to be a blessing to somebody in a way that you would not have thought to do before? Or maybe you thought so, but then you decided not to do it because, well, they ain't really at your level. So, psh, they can't really serve you, not even a little bit. So why even bother? Have you ever thought about this? Everybody is beneath somebody. Meaning there's always somebody higher than you. There's somebody that got more money than you. There's somebody that is taller than you. There's somebody that is prettier than you, more handsome than you, more sexy than you, more knowledgeable than you. Imagine if all the teachers decided, Psh, you know what? I don't really feel like being bothered with your snotty kid. They got, they got a bad attitude, and their attitude is worse than they knows. 
I don't even think I want to be bothered. Besides, they only eight. That's just beneath my level. I ain't even got time. <laughs> or how about the preacher that decided, you know what, man? You on death row. Why even bother to give you last rites? You messed this up a long time ago. What am I going to do? Give you last rites like God is going to forgive you for what? You killed all the people or it, everybody in jail is innocent. Just because you say you innocent, that don't mean you innocent. Why give you last rites? You beneath me. Let me go over here to some people that got some money. Some people ain't never committed a crime. Let me go spend some time with them. At least they got a future. And a future means ties. You about to die in 24 hours. You ain't paying no more ties. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's kind of funny, right? And you would be like, man, I will hope not that a preacher would even consider that idea in their head because they're supposed to serve God. Yeah, but they're not supposed to be poor. And so believe it or not, there are some people that go around with that thought thinking, giving somebody last rites that's on death row, waste of time. But if you can save that soul, even at the last minute, it's not a waste of time. It's absolutely not a waste of time. Even if, let's say, for example, they're not on death row, but maybe they in jail for a year or two, or maybe they got longer time. I hope not. But if you take the time to offer them salvation, you may not only change their life, but you may change the life of their family and the people they communicate with, which oftentimes the people in jail become like surrogate family. Some of them become surrogate wives. I do apologize, y'all. I'm so sorry. I rebuke that devil in the name of Jesus. Yeah, a lot of homosexuality goes on in prison. Sometimes the bigger person will take the smaller person. That's called, you know, unwanted advance. It starts with the R. And and so, and then some people are just gay. There's even prostitution in jail. It's like, well, they ain't even got no money. What they going to offer up? Food, rations, clothes, T-shirts, socks, underwear, towels, shaving cream, yeah, any number of things, hair barrettes. Now, this goes both ways. Male and female have prostitutes in jail. Some people... They want to have their flesh satisfied, and so they will prostitute themselves. So there's pimping, or sometimes they get prostituted. There's pimping that goes on in jail. The same stuff that happens outside the jail happens inside the jail because the only thing you did was change the location of the person, but you didn't change the mindset, which is why so many people talk about recidivism, which is helping the people to change how they think about themselves because when you don't think of yourself high enough as if you can change and be somebody then all you do is listen to the lies of the devil telling you you no good you nothing and why offer you last rights you died anyway dude <laughs> why you ain't paying no ties why <laughs> and so you know people it, it, they are worth every person is worth telling some telling them about jesus every person and even for the people that say to pastors i've heard this they go yo dude the pastor is a straight pimp what? <laughs> and they <laughs> they be laughing their butt off right one guy told me that i was like <laughs> i was almost offended for a minute there but i said wait a minute wait a minute a grown man ain't going to call another man pimp without a reason. So I'm like, yo, dude, why are you saying that? He's like, because <laughs> it's true. I go, you telling me he got people on the strip? Yeah, not on that kind of strip. You'll find out. Watch. And I'm like, watch. And so I'm watching. I'm looking around. I'm going, what's up? Jesus, what's up? What's going on? What's up with the rent? Say what? And <laughs> I'm sitting here to trying to figure it out. I'm, I kid you not. I'm I'm actually trying to figure it out. 
And then, lo and behold, one of these people come and he puts his finger in between my breast. I was like, what the f- And then I heard, pimp! <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and I was, I mean, I'm laughing now because I was so upset. I didn't know what to do, but I stood there like a soldier. I was just so angry. And I'm like, I've been trained to not react because I, I often don't have a gauge on my emotions when I react. And so I've been trained to not react. And so I just said, and I looked him in the eye, I was like, okay. Because he's called himself trying to tell me how to be strong. And he's like, well, I'm going to treat you like I treat a man. Oh, okay. So you, you tapped him in the chest, and you see I got breasts. And you're going to tap me in the chest. But if I was working at your dealership, you wouldn't pay me the same as you pay men. You would actually pay me less. So how is it you treat me like a man? And so... <laughs> And so anyway, you got to move past some of this stuff that these dudes be doing, especially in the church, because God is asking them to treat both male and female the way he, the way Jesus loves the church. And Jesus does not separate a man from a woman when it comes to his love. He does not separate a man and a woman when it comes to his love. Jesus asked us for something. He asked us for something. He says, um, this is what I'm about to do. I came to save you. And I'm a, I'm going to defeat death, hell, and the grave, and I'm going to do it for you. And all I want you to do is feed my sheep. And he kept asking his disciples, he go, yo, man. You love me. He like, yo, bro, you man, you know we much love. We love, we love, not the gay kind of love, but you know, brother, brother, love. Yeah, I take care of your girl, cause I know if I was on the other side, you take care of my girl, my family, y'all, and the girls are signifying, uh huh, yeah. He's like, Jesus, like. Yo, dude, come on. What's up? Yo, can I get a bite of your sandwich? Yo, man, you don't slob on my sandwich. Oh, dude, I thought you, see, I thought you loved me. Yo, man, yo, man, take my fries, too. Take my fries, too. You can have my fries. It's a large. Take my fries. You can have my sandwich and my fries. Anything else? Feed my sheep. I got you. I got you. Anybody around, man, I got you. I'm going to do that. I'm going to bless everybody around me, Lord. He like, okay. He go, he eating on them fries, take a little bit of that burger, take a little sip of the soda, go, man, that soda good. I hope it ain't got no cocaine up in it. You know what they used to do, get them all addicted and everything. You know what I'm saying? They get to scratching and itching and whatnot. They go, yo, bro, uh, you love me. He go, you know what, homie? I'm getting a little bit offended right here. This is the third time you done asked me this. I'm getting a little offended. Why you keep asking me this? And Jesus was asking him because he goes, he was saying it without really saying it. He goes, feed my sheep. And he's telling him, my sheep is not just the ones that are here and that have heard me preach my gospel in person. My sheep are the ones that have yet to hear me and will believe. And they won't be seeing my face, but they will see yours. And I need you to go get them, whether they are rich or poor, whether they are drug addicts or crispy clean, whether they are sex addicts, well, they are taking up another religion because they got hurt by somebody in this camp. I need you to apologize to them 
And I need you to use my word to heal their broken hearts and to bind up their wounds. I need you to listen to them and feed them the right word. I need you to go and reach my sheep by every means necessary. The, the most advanced form of technology they had back then were donkeys and feet. Donkeys, horses, and feet for traveling, caravans, put on a buggy wagon, and they had microphones which you could like, you know, or the horns you could blow through. But, you know, amplify that thing, put a hole up in it. You got you a microphone. But usually the microphone was how loud a baritone could speak. <laughs> Echoes in the hall, y'all. I'm saying, Jesus, Jesus is coming. He paid the price for all of y'all. I'm telling you, he defeated death, hell, and the grave. Jesus, Jesus is coming. And he's like, yo, I ain't just talking to him. I'm talking to all y'all and all y'all that'll come. Are you going to be scared and shrink back? Because you know what? You're not only going to have to tell them about my gospel, but you're going to have to teach them how to pray. You're going to have to teach them how to stand in the face of danger because the enemy is going to come at them and he's going to be holding weapons to their necks and throats and to their children and saying, denounce Jesus right now. Columbine. Denounce Jesus right now, Chicago. Denounce Jesus right now, New York, Atlanta. Denounce Jesus right now, Seattle, Washington. Denounce Jesus right now, North Carolina, Oklahoma. Denounce Jesus right now, I'm going to put a bullet through your head, put, put, put California. Denounce Jesus right now. And you got to tell them, you got to stand strong because if you denounce Jesus right now, they're going to put a bullet through your head anyway. And they're going to say, see, you didn't really believe. Bam. And you're going to go to hell. You might as well die upholding the word of God than to cower and still be killed like a dog in the street. Because God will take you away so that you don't feel any pain. He will remove you from your body before you before that bullet hits you. He will take your pain away. And for some of y'all, he'll make sure the gun, even though they cock the gun, the bullet won't come out. So some of you, he was he will spare your life, and some of you were meant to die as a martyr so that your story could be told. Some of you, I should say, some of you, your your book ended at that time. Don't ask me why. That's just how it is. You were in that particular place and it ended at that time. And then it began again in heaven. I don't know all the details. That's just what I see. That's what I understand. Not everybody wants to be a martyr because remember to be a martyr is to be dead. Mortar, mortuary, mar, mar, martyr. Got to be dead in order to be a martyr. I'm, I'm personally I'm not looking forward to that. I don't really ascribe to that. I don't want that for my life. I've had bullets. I've had guns put at my head before by police officers, criminals, people, other people. And, and every time I can tell you this, there is no fun and no joy to it. None. You can think you as hard as you want to be, but when it comes to a cold piece of steel with some firecracker in it, ain't nobody that brave. You can't fight the bullet, not on your own. But what you can do is call on the name of Jesus and let him fight that bullet. Because it's that trigger finger on the other end that's pulling it. But the thing that's pulling that trigger finger is the heart that's inside that body that's holding that trigger, that heart don't know Jesus. Yeah, they probably went to Sunday school when they were little. 
but basically they just paid their penance they just showed up and was like what up my daddy said this stuff ain't real anyway so i'm just here because my mama making me come me and my daddy we going fishing after this anyway so i gotta come here in order to go fishing so what how many of y'all had that story you only went to church because mama said you had to go but daddy was like <laughs> that stuff ain't real they don't put no food on the table son i go to work every day to make sure you get got clothes on your back and food on the table i go get mine what your mama doing your mama up there talking and praying to some white jesus that ain't doing nothing that white jesus don't care about us he's a jew anyway what he care about us for he ain't here you seen him anywhere you see him doing anything for you he ain't doing nothing for you you messing those kids minds up yo you straight up messing those kids' minds up because you know the truth. And the only reason why you don't want to tell them that Jesus is real is because somebody hurt your feelings. Somebody hurt your widow feelings and you wasn't man enough to say, you know what? You hurt me. I was hurt when I was a little kid or I experienced this and I didn't like it. So therefore, I'm mad at God and I'm going to tell everybody that he ain't real. How many people have been through that? You got hurt by some Christian or some pastor who's a, still a Christian. <laughs> and you decided to hate the whole world. My pastor, I've had a couple of pastors, have done terrible things to me that I thought were completely just unjust. Completely unjust. And I was angry. But I refuse to give up God. One of the worst things that they did to me is it said, you cannot serve God. I said, what? Yeah, you can clean the toilets. You can clean the toilets. You can sweep the floor. You can vacuum. You can come. You can sit on a church. You can li- you can sit on a, on a chair and listen to us talk. But you cannot hold office. You cannot be an apostle. And the only time you go evangelize is if we with you. You can't really do that on your own. You I mean, they would encourage you, say, you know, invite a friend to church. But if you say something like, I got the feeling that God is calling me to be an apostle, be an apostle. I want to go to Bible school. Oh, uh, you can't do that. I'm, uh, what? Why not? Because ain't nobody going to write you no recommendation letter. You a girl. That's for men. Only men can handle that. I said, what? There ain't no female preachers? What the freak? No. But what about all these women in the Bible? They like, Deborah! Woo! Esther Ruth! Yo, man, God mentioned them because they were important. And I only mentioned a few of them. I mean, what about Mary? Because without Mary, you ain't getting no Jesus. I don't care how big your willy is. It ain't producing no burber. Definitely can't hold one for nine months. It can barely hold something for six minutes. So to tell a woman that she's inconsequential and that she is not important to the value of life is a lie. And to the value of faith is an absolute bold face lie. You're listening to LUTG Radio's WKKP Digital Broadcasting. It's a lie to tell a woman that she cannot participate and that she cannot help and that she cannot attain offices in the body of Christ. It's often women that are first to get saved. In the household of the Duplantises, it was his wife, Kathy, that got saved first. Then he got saved. Even though he was called to preach, he was called by God because his mother asked for a preacher. And God chose the heathen, the worst of all her kids. That's the one he chose. He goes, that one's going to be a good preacher. Because he just had a heart. If he once he puts his mind to something, boom, that's it. Once he knows it's real, <sighs> once he figured out that God was absolutely serious about loving him and wanted to bless him, he was on fire for God. And he never left his wife behind in that knowledge and in that understanding of God. 
His wife now is a preacher of his church. His wife is his pastor. That's Jesse the planet. So don't ever tell me that a woman does not have a place in the body of Christ, in the church, because yes, she can. <laughs> yes, she can. God will ask you to do something because he's trying to get you to a place where you need to be because in that place that you need to be, you're supposed to be there so that you can be an, a positive influence on someone else. So when I wasn't invited to go to church because somebody thought that my friends were not good enough to be around, they prevented me from being in a place to be effective, to be an effective witness to someone else. And when I saw all those people that went to hell, that were judged for judgment in heaven, I cried and I was sad because I know and I can recount the times that I tried to go to church and I tried to be a part of a church as a youth. And they didn't want me or somebody pulled me away. And I said, God, I'm, I'm like, God, how can this be that they suffer the children not to come unto the Lord? They will prevent the children from coming to God. How dare you prevent anyone from coming to God, from serving the Lord? If a person wants to give their heart to Jesus, let them. It ain't your business. Your business is only to tell them how to get saved and to walk them through it. It's God's business to raise them up. It's God's business to mature them. All you're there is a mouthpiece. He needs a witness. You're the witness, the mouthpiece. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to, now is the time. I ain't holding it back from you. It's yours for the having. For God so loved the world, this is John three sixteen and 17. For God so loved the world that he gives only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Salvation is is for everyone the whole earth so if that is you and you want to get saved you want to be forgiven of all your sins and be back in the face of the father and receive all the blessings the abrahamic covenant blessings of god of jesus that forgiveness that love that blood covering Amen. That that peace that surpasses all understanding, you get it from the Lord and you get it by saying this prayer. Repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I confess my sins before you this day. I give up my past life with Satan and close every door to all Satan's devices. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me and for bringing me back to where I once was. From this day forward, Lord Jesus, I will be sensitive to how you feel. I won't hurt you. I will obey you, Lord Jesus. I ask you, to present me to Jehovah in your name. Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart, I confess with my mouth that you rose from the dead, that I am saved and receive you today wholeheartedly 100%. Make me a light in a dark place And from this day forward, I will leave this place and share you with everyone I meet and everyone I know. It's commitment, Jesus. I will get this world for you. I pray this prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. With evidence of speaking in tongues for the edifying of the body of Christ Jesus by the will of Jehovah God. 
Amen. Amen. Congratulations. You just got saved. Jesus loves you, beloved, 100%. Amen. I love you like Jesus loves you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Read your Bible. Read the Holy Bible, starting off with the book of John. Um, and then go to the book of Genesis and read from Genesis to Revelations. Glory to God. Amen. Tell me that you got saved. Let me know. You can put it in the chat on letgradio.com or on the Spreaker Show. Spreaker Show. So if you go to Spreaker.com um, and just type in L-U-T-G Radio uh, underscore Kathy Brox, you should find it. Um, you can also just find it on the website, L-U-T-G Radio.com, as well as um, you can find me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you know, Tumblr, um, all those normal, all those regular ones. And um, the We Heart It, uh, I'm also on there. Amen. Glory to God. So thank you so much. You're listening to LUTG Radio. I hope you were blessed by this message. And Jesus loves you. Amen. WKKP Digital Broadcasting. My name is Kathy Brox. And this is the LUTG Radio Show. Signing off.